Hello, my dear friends. Hope you all are fine. Now I'm going to continue the breathing and exchange of gases, mind map, my dear. So in this uh, part we study right now. So in previous we study about the mechanisms of respiration, my dear. Now here the time to understand here what the way of respiration in human beings, my dear. Okay. So here now I'm going to start the breathing and exchange of gases and what the breathing and exchange of gases basically take place in human. This one is the very important thing to understand here, my dear. Okay. So let me start here. But before we have to start, hope so that everything is perfect and fine. So you all are welcome in test prep card, my dears. So once again, so now I'm going to start this one thing. Okay. So what the thing is here in mind map, my dear, let's see here. When I'm saying about the exchange of gases, it means that what the transport of gases, my dear. Okay. So if I'm saying the transport of gases, it means what? Here the transport of gases, it means that the transport of oxygen, transport of carbon dioxide. But the thing is here to be important to note here that how this transport of oxygen and uh, carbon dioxide is occurred within the body cells, my dear. Okay. So let me start from this one thing. Here we just see first. What we understand about this one, let's see here. First, we have to understand here the transport of gases. And in transport of gases, my dear, here we have to be understand through how the transportation. There you all know that the transportation will help uh, with the help of what? Yes, body fluid. That very bloody fluid is what? Uh, blood. And you all know that the blood has two parts that is plasma and the formed elements or you say the cellular elements. So in plasma, you know that about 3% blood in blood plasma, how much about there is 3% and you all know that uh, as oxyhemoglobin about how much percent 97% my dear. So now the scene is here that how this uh, oxygen transported within the blood cells. Yes or no? Because blood is also fluid connective tissue, my dear. So this one is thing that is very important to note here that how the how the transportation of gases will take place to each and every part of the cell, my dear. Let me see. Let me start from this one thing. But before we have to be know, uh, come through this one transport of the gases here, also we have to be understand here the exchange of gases between blood and tissues and between aloe valley and blood, right? Now the question is here, how it be sir, performed? Let me see with the help of the NCRT. So before we have to go on NCRT, here there's something that is very important to know, my dear. Here that is how the respiration will take place in human, my dear. Okay. So let's see if anybody can ask you about the respiration in the human. Here the word transport of gases, my dear. What I'm saying? I'm saying here that transport of gases so if i'm saying here that the transport of gases mainly occurred with the help of the word fluid connective tissue so transport of the gases what i'm writing here it occurred it occurred with the help of with the help of what my dear fluid connective tissue what i'm saying fluid connective tissue and you all know that the fluid connective tissue is which one yes that is what my dear blood that is what blood and in the blood it consists of two parts you and you all know that blood consists of how many parts two parts my dear one is what plasma number one is what plasma my dear okay and second one is what formed elements second one is what formed elements you all know formed elements and this formed elements my dear what that is that is first rbc's second one is what my dear wbc's and third one is what platelets third one is what platelets my dear so these all are the formed elements now the question is here how the transport of gases will take place Mainly, you know that the oxygen binder that is what whom RBC. So O2 is transported with the help of RBC. O2 is what I am saying here transported, transported with how 
so let me start from this one thing how the inspiration and expiration will take place my dear okay so let's check here the two thing is here very important to understand here that how the inspiration and expiration will take place my dear okay so let's see whenever i am saying about this term inspiration it means what it means that uh, taking off uh, oxygen my dear okay and whenever i am saying about the term expiration it means what it means that we exhale carbon dioxide but now the question is here how this inspiration and expiration will take place okay so let's see if i'm saying here about this one thing that inspiration it means what during inspiration with atmospheric air is drawn in atmospheric air it means that that very air is what mixture of gases and mixture of gases whenever i'm saying that gases contain nitrogen also oxygen also carbon dioxide gases also each and everything gases will be there and that very gases is what very important for all of us my dear yes so that's why i'm saying here that mainly the exchange of gases will take place during inspiration but now in the question we in what expiration what we understand here expiration my dear in expiration it means what here the alveolar air is what released out what i'm saying released out it means that whenever we intake of their oxygen, not only we, we take oxygen, we take all the rest other gases also. So during uh, inspiration, all the gases, whenever we take that time, only the oxygen goes diffused within the body cells. And basically, you know that the oxygen is required to decompose the food, whatever we eat, my dear. Okay. So here I am saying that the movement of air into and out of the lungs is carried out by creating a pressure against gradient my dear and this pressure again gradient will be occurred with the help of their what the lungs that the lungs is an important organ for the exchange of gases here okay now second thing that is important to understand here that how the pressure within the lungs built here the pressure whenever i'm saying that the pressure is with their what intrapulmonary pressure what i'm saying intrapulmonary pressure so this intrapulmonary pressure is what less than the what atmospheric pressure my dear so if i am saying here that whatever the pressure whatever the pressure within the lungs is less than the atmospheric pressure clear so whenever the pressure within the lungs is less than the atmospheric pressure there is negative pressure in the lungs there is what type of pressure negative pressure my dear with respect to atmospheric pressures so during expiration and expiration there is what intrapulmonary pressure is what higher than the atmospheric pressure my dear this one is very important line so during expiration which one is higher than the atmospheric pressure yes intrapulmonary pressure is what higher my dear than the atmospheric pressure so in the meanwhile the diaphragm and a specialized set of muscles also my dear external and internal intercostal mus muscles also have what help in the generation of such gradient my dear now the thing is here very important to understand that how this contraction of external intercostal muscle lifts my dear okay so during this time external intercostal muscle lift up the ribs and the what sternum causing an increase in the volume of the thoracic chamber in the dorsal ventral axis my dear so this one is important line to understand here that how this sternum causes an increase in the volume of thoracic chamber so you know that whenever we intake that very air that very air is what that very air increase the capacity of the lung chamber so that the lung chamber filled with the airs and meanwhile that air contain oxygen goes diffuse within the alveolar my dear so overall increase in the thoracic chamber thoracic volume causing similar increases in pulmonary volume also so once the once the thoracic volume goes increases 
in the same way the increase in the pulmonary volume also my dear okay so now see here whenever the air entering the lungs see here whenever the in, air entering into the lungs in this time a ribs and a sternum raise what i'm saying a ribs and a sternum what raised my dear so when the ribs and sternum raised then the volume of the thorax also goes increases my dear so in that time in that time you always keep in mind that the diaphragm what my dear contracted so if the diaphragm contracted it means that what the volume of the thorax goes increases right this one is important thing now now the question is here how this intrapulmonary pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure you know that you know that when the forces of the air from outside move into the lungs that is inspiration so during the inspiration this intrapulmonary pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure so if the intrapulmonary pressure is less than the atmospheric pressure then 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 at that moment air from outside move into the lungs air from outside move into the lungs and whenever this air from outside move into the lungs then it is termed as what inspiration my dear right now there are some cases that is what vice versa during expiration you all know that during expiration a relaxation of the diaphragm and the intercostal muscles my dear so once the intercostal muscles goes what relaxes then 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 the diaphragm and the sternum to their normal position and reduce the thoric volume my dear so once the thoric volume goes uh, what decreases thereby the pulmonary volume also goes what my dear increases okay so this leads to the increase in intrapulmonary pressure here the increment of which one thing the increment of the intrapulmonary pressure my dear this intrapulmonary pressure once goes increases to slightly above the atmospheric pressure causing the expulsion of the air from the lungs my dear that is expiration so this one is the important line here to understand during expiration let's see let's see this one diagram the air the air that is move out from the lungs so once the air move out from the lungs my dear expelled from the lungs then that time ribs and sternum return original position what i'm saying ribs and sternum return to which one position original position and once the ribs and sternum return to its original position then the volume of the thorax were decreased my dear what i'm saying yes you are right the volume of the thorax goes decreases and once if the th volume of the thorax goes decreases the diaphragm also relaxed and become arched see this one diagram see this one diagram so this one is the what the air expelled from the lungs during the what inspiration and what expiration my dear okay so see during inspiration what the things is to be here what the things is to be here here it means that during inspiration ribs and sternum raise volume of the thorax increased once the what expiration diaphragm relaxed and arced upward so it means here that the volume of thorax decreased and the ribs and the sternum return to its what's original position my dear so this one is the what antagonistic or you say the vice versa during inspiration or expiration my dear now here the question that how the increase increase the strength of inspiration and expiration with the help of muscles yes or no that very muscles in the abdomen which is responsible for for what increase the strength of inspiration as well as what expiration my dear okay so this one is very important line so on an average you know that healthy human breathe how much times 12 to 16 times per minute my dear so in a one minute the healthy human what breathe at least how much 12 to 16 times yes absolutely you're right so the volume of the air involved in the breathing movement can be estimated by using a spirometer so see here one of the term is very important here spirometer spirometer is an instrument which is helpful in clinical assessment of pulmonary function so now i'm going to write in a slide also that spirometer spirometer see this one is very important line so that's why i'm saying to you here See here, which one instrument is spiro, 
meter my dear okay so this one is a spirometer is an instrument which is used to measure the pulmonary functions my dear pulmonary the exchange of gases will take place okay getting my point let's see here if anybody can ask you which one instrument which can estimate it by what clinical assessment of pulmonary function then what you say you say here that a spirometer so a spirometer is an instrument which is responsible to check the clinical assessment of pulmonary function so see here the two diagrams that is uh, basically responsible for the mechanisms of breathing so during the mechanisms of breathing here the two thing is important here one is what inspiration second one is what expiration now the question is here now the question is here sir respiratory volume and capacities so whenever during inspiration and expiration what the respiratory volume and their capacity is this one is important point to understand here okay so let's check here one first thing that is very important to know first one is that is what tidal volume so if anybody can ask you about this one tidal volume then what you reply you will say there that the volume of air inspired or expired see what i'm saying whatever the volumes just i'm marking here the terms volumes of a air inspired or expired during normal respiration suppose i am sitting here i am teaching right now so in this meantime what i am doing i am respiration doing or not yes definitely sir you are doing respiration as well as breathing also so here what i am saying i am saying here that whatever the volume of air inspired or expired during normal respiration it approx how much milliliter my dear that is 500 milliliter okay so you know that that is a healthy person can inspire or expire approximately 60,000 my dear sorry 6,000 to 8,000 milliliter of air per minute my dear this one is important line clear clear now I'm going to repeat here the tidal volume word the tidal volume is such a volume it means that during inspiration or expiration a normal human body or you say the healthy human body can inspire or expire approximately 6000 to 8000 milliliter of per of year per minute by year so whatever this expiration or inspiration during uh, breathing or you say the respiration my dear that very volume is known as what tidal volume getting my point so approximately the value is here is what 6000 to 8000 so this one is very important point to be note here just you have to take out your copy and write down this one thing also now the second thing now the second thing here is dear what the second thing is here that inspiratory reserve volume that is irv so whenever i am saying here that the inspiratory reserve volume it means what inspiratory reserve volume it means that additional volume of air what I'm saying additional volume of air so once the additional volume of air it means that a person can inspire by a forcible inspiration see in this way in this way if any person can do this one is said to be the inspiratory reserve volume in this meanwhile the average 2500 milliliter to 3000 milliliter my dear okay now now the next thing that is what expiratory reserve volume expiratory reserve volume in short way we represent erv here additional volume of air whatever the volume of the air a person can expire by a force forcibly expiration then this average is how much 1000 milliliter to 1 1100 milliliter my dear okay so this one is the important points that you must have to be know during inspiration or expiration right now second thing that is what residual volume that is rv we represent we how about the meaning of rv residual volume it means that whatever the volume of air remaining in the lungs remaining where in the lungs even after by the forcible expiration even in this way whenever the forcible expiration will take place this average there some amount of the volume of air remain in the lungs that is 11 1100 milliliter to 1200 milliliter my dear okay so this one is very important now next thing that is important to know here inspiratory capacity that is what i see my dear if anybody can ask you about the, this term i see that is inspiratory capacity then how you how you define this thing and how you 
just to give this information about this inspiratory capacity let's see here here i'm going to say, say you the total volume of air or uh, person can inspire after a normal expiration see what i'm saying here that whatever the total volume of air of a person can inspire inspire and after a normal expiration this is includes the tidal volume and inspiratory reserve volume that is tv yani tidal volume along with the what inspiratory reserve volume and combined together then it forms what inspiratory capacity and you know that the inspiratory capacity is what different in different mammals my dear okay so whatever the total volume of air a person can inspire after a normal expiration that is known as what inspiratory capacity my dear okay now the next thing that is important to understand here that what expiratory capacity is so what do you mean by expiratory capacity expiratory capacity it means that whatever the total volume of air listen listen again what i'm saying whatever the total volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration suppose if i am here taking what normal inspiration so here if i am taking the normal inspiration in this time of whenever the person can expire after a normal inspiration this includes the what tidal volume and respiratory reserve my dear is uh, expiratory reserve volume it means what that the tidal volume along with the what expiratory reserve volume then it is termed as what expiratory capacity so again i am repeating whatever the expiratory capacity the expiratory capacity is totally depend on the volume of air a person can expire after a normal inspiration getting my point so this one is the thing now another one that is what functional residual capacity that is frc frc it means that the volume of air that will remain in the lungs remain in the lungs when when this condition will occur this condition will occur after a normal expiration my dear okay so during the normal expiration the functional reserve volume capacity is here and the normal inspiration during normal inspiration the here is what expiratory capacity my dear okay now let's see here what the meaning of this vital capacity here the vital capacity we see it means what the maximum volume of air a person can breathe in after a forced expiration suppose if i am in this way okay so the maximum volume of air here a person can breathe in after a forced expiration this includes which one thing erv expiratory reserve volume tv tidal volume and irv what i'm saying irv inspiratory reserve volume these all combine together or you say the maximum volume of air persons can breathe out after a forced inspiration is known as vital capacity okay so if anybody can ask you about the vital capacity then you say their what the maximum volume of air person can breathe in after a forced expiration is known as what vital capacity my dear hope so this thing is clear now the last one that is what total lung capacity if anybody can ask you about the total lung capacity then what you say at that time you say there that the total volume of air accommodated in the lungs at the end of the forced inspiration suppose here i am the forced inspiration i am doing here so in this very include reserve volume respiratory reserve volume tidal volume and then after what irv or you say the vital capacity or along with the what residual volume my dear so these all are the very important things that to be noted here right is that clear now next thing that is what exchange of gases we all know that during inspiration or expiration there is what exchange of gases will take place my dear now the question is here how this exchange of gases will take place right so see if i am saying here that the exchange of gases will take place from the primary site alveoli you know that the alveoli is what alveoli are the primary site of exchange of gases so if anybody can ask you which are the primary site of exchange of gases then what you say alveoli my dear so alveoli is a what nothing it is a small bag or a sack like structures where mainly the exchange of gases will take place so here exchange of gases also occur in between the blood and tissues my dear so see if i am saying here that the exchange of gases occur between the blood and tissues 
then it means that here oxygen and carbon dioxide are exchanged in these sites by simple diffusion. What I am saying? Simple diffusion. So simple diffusion is the method in which the mainly the oxygens and carbon dioxide are exchanged. Okay. Now here the pressure also contributed by a individual gas in mixture of gases called partial pressure and that partial pressure is represented as PO2 for oxygen and PCO2 for carbon dioxide. Here it means that the pressure is what contributed by individual by individual gas in a mixture of gases my dear is called partial pressure and represented as what for oxygens and for what carbon dioxide right <laughs> here the data also given check here here the data also given that uh, what the partial pressure what the partial pressure in mm of hg of oxygens and carbon dioxide at different parts involved in the diffusion diffusion in what comparison to those in what atmosphere let's see here the thing that is asking you that you have to be uh, mark that very partial pressure in a in a uh, meal that is uh, what the oxygen and carbon dioxide because oxygen and carbon dioxide parts involved in the diffusion is comparison to those in atmosphere let's see here the respiratory gases oxygen atmospheric air 159 so allo valley how much 104 so here the blood deoxygenated is how much 40 blood oxygenated is what 95 so which one is the form also affected that is what tissue might be getting my point so this one is the thing so now second thing that is important to understand here that carbon dioxide co2 that is a respiratory gas and atmospheric air 0.3 allo valley 40 blood deoxygenated 45 and blood oxygenated 40 so if we unite together then it forms what 45 and this very 45 the uh, air will there it is a filter air that is passed to there by different types of tissues my dear is that clear now here the diagrammatic representation of exchange of gases so here see how the exchange of gases will take place this is a very important point to understand so you know how the exchange of gases will take place this exchange of gases will take place with the help of in the same way that how the circulatory system will occur my dear okay so let's see here on the top that is what lungs and in the bottom that is what body so this one is the diagram i was also told in previous classes also dear okay so see if anybody can ask you that how this one exchange of gases will take place you can easily define their exchange of gases can easily be take place with the help of the diagram so whatever the diagram given in the biology each and everything is completed so the teachers is what also responsible to go through that very diagram and show the students that how this diagram is given here and what the relation of the gases along with the transportation spine okay so are you all ready to know here Yes, if you are ready to know here, then I will continue. So, see, if I am saying here that this one is the change of gases, my dear. So, this one exchange of gases is responsible for how the mainly gases will transport it to each and every part of the cell. This one is very important point. Getting my point or no? So, see, here, this one is what on the top, that is what lungs and this one is heart, this one is body. So, whatever the oxygenated blood that passes through pulmonary vein to where, where, where? This one is left auricle, left ventricle, always oxygenated blood. And here, the systemic arteries that carries the blood towards where body organ, my dear. And after that, whatever the body organ receives, that carbon dioxide it passes through systemic vein. Where systematic systemic vein inside the yes, here this one. This one is what systemic vein, and this systemic vein carry the body oxygenated blood to the heart. And after that, the pulmonary artery carry oxygen, uh, pulmonary artery carry deoxygenated blood into the alveolus, my dear. Okay. So here the blood come inside the heart at two times. So that's why here I'm saying what double circulatory system, my dear. Okay. This one is the important thing. Now, next thing that is what how the, this gases will transport and this gases will transport with the help of their what a small projections that is villi my dear okay 
So this one is the thing that is we have to be discussed in short details of this mind map. When we move ahead, then we go through these all things line by line, my dear. Okay. So thank you for watching me. Thank you. Have a nice day. Take care.